Publius Licinius Ignatius Gallienus II 18 AD, September 268 AD served as the Roman Emperor from 253 AD to 268 AD, until his demise in 260 AD alongside his father Valerianus I. For a brief period in AD 260, he ruled jointly with his second son, Saloninus. Both Gallienus and his father Valerianus I were well received by the Senate, holding the titles of Augusti, which denoted their imperial status. According to the accounts of Johannes Malalas and the Epitome de Cesaribus, Gallienus was approximately 50 years old at the time of his death, suggesting that he was born around 218 AD. He was the son of Valerian I and Ignatia Mariniana, possibly from a senatorial lineage, and there are indications that Ignatius Victor Marinianus might have been his maternal grandfather. Gallienus had a brother named Valerian Minor. Inscriptions on coins associate him with the city of Falari in Etruria, which might have been his birthplace. These inscriptions also link him to his mother's family, the Ignatii. Around 243 AD, approximately a decade before ascending to the throne, Gallienus married Julia Cornelia Salonina, with whom he had three sons, Valerian II, died 258 AD, Saloninus, who died shortly after becoming co-emperor in 260 AD during the revolt of Posthumus in Colonia Claudia Aria Agrippinensium, and Marinianus, who was killed in 268 AD, shortly after his father's assassination. When his father Valerian was proclaimed emperor on October 22, 253 AD, he requested the Senate to confirm Gallienus' position as Caesar and Augustus, thus sharing power between the two. Gallienus also held the title of Consul Ordinarius for the year 254 AD. Following a strategy employed a century earlier by Marcus Aurelius and his adopted brother Lucius Verus, Gallienus and his father divided the Roman Empire. Valerianus I went east to confront the Persian threat, while Gallienus remained in Italy to defend the Rhine and Danube frontiers against the Germanic tribes. This division of power made sense not only due to the challenges faced by previous emperors ruling such a vast empire but also because barbarous enemies often demanded negotiations with the leader of the Victoria side. Having an emperor available for such negotiations proved advantageous in such situations. Gallienus ascended to the throne as emperor in 253 AD, following his father Valerianus' triumph over Emperor Marcus Aemilius Aemilianus in a decisive battle in Italis. Tragically, Aemilianus was betrayed and killed by his own soldiers, leading to the Senate proclaiming Valerianus as the new emperor. Though Gallienus primarily focused his efforts on the provinces of the Rhine region, including Germania Inferior, Germania Superior, Raetia, and Noricum, Historical records suggest he also undertook visits to the Danube area and Illyricum between 253 and 258 AD. Eutropius and Aurelius Victor describe him as a highly energetic ruler. Gallienus successfully defended the provinces of Germania Inferior and Germania Superior from Germanic invasions, which were brought about by the instability caused by Valerian's campaign against Aemilianus in 253 AD. Numismatic evidence strongly indicates that he achieved several victories during this period, including one in Roman Dacia. Even accounts from the Latin tradition, which was often critical of him, acknowledged his successes during this time. Gallienus received the consulship in 255 and 257 AD. It is possible that he made brief visits to Rome on these occasions, but there is no concrete evidence supporting this claim. While stationed in the Danube region, possibly in 255 or 256 AD, according to Drinkwater's suggestion, Gallienus appointed his eldest son Valerian II as Caesar, making him the official heir to both himself and his father Valerian I. It is likely that Valerian II accompanied Gallienus on his military campaigns while the emperor shifted his attention to the western Rhine provinces in 257 AD leaving Valerian II behind on the Danube to represent imperial authority. Sometime between 258 and 260 AD, the exact date is not entirely clear, Gallienus faced the first significant rebellion against his reign. Ingenuous, governor of at least one of the Pannonias, took advantage of Valerian I's absence in the east, where he was dealing with the invasion of the Sassanid king of kings Shaparai, and Gallienus' preoccupation with problems on the Rhine frontier. 
Ingenuus declared himself emperor. Valerian II likely died in 258 AD while stationed with the legions on the Danube border, and Ingenuus may have been responsible for his death, or perhaps he feared being held accountable for the disaster. Another perspective suggests that Valerian I's capture at the Battle of Edessa triggered subsequent revolts by Ingenuus, Regalianus, and Posthumus. In any case, Galianus responded swiftly. He appointed his son Saloninus as Caesar in Colonia Claudia Ara Agrippinensium, under the supervision of Albinus, or Silvanus, while the military leadership was entrusted to Posthumus. Galianus then moved rapidly to the Balkans, accompanied by the newly formed cavalry corps commanded by Aurelius. He defeated the usurper, Ingenuus, either through the rebellion's own troops turning against him, or Ingenuus taking his own life by drowning after the fall of his capital, Sirmium. The victory was largely attributed to Galianus' well-trained cavalry and its brilliant commander, Aurelius. Between 258 and 260 AD, a significant invasion by the Alemanni and other Germanic tribes took place, the exact date of these events is difficult to determine. This invasion was likely a consequence of the withdrawal of Roman troops from the Rhine and Danube borders to support Galianus' campaign against Ingenuus, which created a security vacuum. Initially, the Franks breached the lower Rhine border and launched an invasion of Gaul. Some of them even reached the southern regions of Hispania, looting Taraco, modern Tarragona, and other places. Subsequently, the Alemanni seized the opportunity and possibly entered the Roman Empire through the Agri Decumates, an area between the Upper Rhine and Upper Danube. The Juthungan might have followed their lead. They devastated parts of Germania Superior and Raetia, areas of present-day eastern France and Switzerland, before advancing towards Italy, marking the first major invasion of the Apennine Peninsula, excluding the most remote northern areas, in 500 years since Hannibal's time. As the invaders approached Rome, the Senate gathered an improvised army composed of local troops, likely members of the Praetorian Guard, and the strongest civilians. This makeshift force successfully pushed back the Alemanni. During their retreat through northern Italy, Galianus' army intercepted the Alemanni near modern-day Milan and decisively defeated them in the Battle of Mediolanum. Galianus, who might have come from Gaul or the Balkans after dealing with the Franks, played a crucial role in this victory. The Juthungan managed to return north across the Alps, taking booty and prisoners with them. After this battle, the Alemanni no longer posed a threat to the Roman Empire. According to the 19th-century historian Victor Girui, the Senate's proactive initiative led to jealousy and suspicion from Galianus, which subsequently resulted in his exclusion of the Senate from military commands. At some point before or after the Alemannic invasion, Regalianus, a military commander of Illyricum, was declared emperor. The reasons for his rise to power are unclear, and the Historia Augusta, which is almost the sole source for these events, does not provide a credible account. It is possible that the takeover can be attributed to the dissatisfaction of the civilian and military population with the neglect of their province's defences. Nevertheless, it appears that Regalianus remained in control for approximately six months. Coins bearing his likeness have been discovered. After achieving some victories against the Sarmatians, his rebellion was quashed when the Roxolani invaded Pannonia. Regalianus himself is said to have been killed during the invasion of the main city of Sirmium. There is a suggestion that Galianus invited the Roxolani to attack Regalianus, but other historians dismiss this claim. It is also proposed that Galianus eventually defeated the invaders near Verona, after which he probably took charge of restoring the province himself. Another consequence of the devastating Battle of Edessa was that Galianus lost control of Germania Inferior. Germania Superior, Britannia, Hispania, and most of Gaul to General Posthumus. This general, allegedly of Batavian descent and possibly born in the territory of what is now the Netherlands or Belgium, established his own empire, now commonly referred to as the Gallic Empire. Posthumus' revolt partially coincided with Macrianus' uprising in the east. The circumstances surrounding this usurpation were, once again, dramatic. In 258 AD, 
Gallienus had appointed his middle son Saloninus and his close advisor Silvanus in Colonia Claudia Aria Agrippinensium. Posthumus commanded the troops in Germania Inferior. At one point, he defeated a group of raiders and confiscated their plunder. However, instead of returning it to the original owners, he chose to distribute the spoils among his soldiers. When Silvanus learned of this, he demanded that the booty be handed over to him. Posthumus feigned submission, but as expected, his soldiers rebelled and declared him emperor. Under Posthumus' command, they then laid siege to Cologne. After several weeks, the city's defenders opened the gates and handed over Saloninus and Silvanus to Posthumus, who had them executed. The exact dating of these events is uncertain, but it is possible that they occurred towards the end of the year 260 AD. After their deaths, Posthumus assumed the consulship alongside one of his allies, Honoratianus. Posthumus, according to D.S. Potter, never attempted to depose Gallienus or invade Italia. After the news of his son's murder, the enraged Gallienus began assembling army units to confront the usurper. However, the invasion of the Macriani forced him to deploy Aurelius to the east at the helm of a large force. This left him with inadequate troops, resulting in some defeats before the victorious army of Aurelius reunited with him. Posthumus was eventually defeated, and the pursuit was entrusted to Aurelius. However, Aurelius intentionally allowed Posthumus to escape, enabling him to gather new troops. Gallienus made another attempt in 263 or 265 AD, and he was remarkably successful this time. He managed to lay siege to Posthumus in an unnamed Gallic city. Unfortunately, during the siege, Gallienus sustained a severe injury from an arrow, which forced him to abandon the siege. As a consequence, an informal truce was in place until the end of Gallienus' reign in 268 AD. The Gallic Empire founded by Posthumus continued until 274 AD. In the eastern part of the empire, Valerian faced significant problems. A group of Scythians conducted a naval attack on the Roman province of Pontus in the northern part of Anatolia. After plundering the coastal province, they moved south to Cappadocia. Valerian aimed to intercept the invaders but was unsuccessful, possibly due to an epidemic that severely weakened his army, or the simultaneous Persian invasion of northern Mesopotamia by Shapai, the ruler of the Sassanid Empire. During the Battle of Edessa, Valerian was captured by Shapa in 259 and 260 AD. After this victory, Shapa's army raided Cilicia and Cappadocia, sacking 36 Roman cities, according to his inscriptions. It was only through the combined efforts of an officer named Callistus, a tax collector named Fulvius Macrianus, the remaining Eastern Roman legions, and Odonathus and his Palmyrene horsemen, that the tide turned against Shapa. In 261 AD, Gallienus became consul for the fourth time. The Persians were pushed back, and during the late summer of 260 AD, Macrianus declared his two sons, Quietus and Macrianus Minor, as emperors. Coins bearing their images were minted in major cities in the east, indicating the acceptance of their usurpation. The two Macriani leaders left Quietus, Ballista, and Odonathus in the east to monitor the Persians while they invaded Europe with an army of around 30,000 men, as recorded in the Historia Augusta. Initially, they faced little opposition, and even some Pannonian legions joined their cause due to their dissatisfaction with Gallienus' absence. However, Gallienus responded by sending his successful commander, Aurelius, to confront the rebels. The decisive battle took place in the spring or early summer of 261 AD, most likely in Illyricum, although Zonara's places it in Pannonia. The usurper's army ultimately surrendered, and both leaders were killed. Following the battle, the revolt led by Posthumus had already begun, leaving Gallienus no time to handle the remaining usurpers himself. Ballista and Quietus were allowed to pursue their own path for the time being. Meanwhile, Gallienus reached an agreement with Odonathus, who had returned victorious from his expedition against the Persians. Odonathus was granted the title of Dux Romanorum. He later besieged Ballista and Quietus at their stronghold in Emesa, present-day Homs. 
Quietus was ultimately killed by the citizens of Emesa, while Ballista was arrested and executed by Odonathus on November 26, 261 AD. In 261 AD, coin minting resumed in Alexandria under Galinus' control, indicating the restoration of order in Egypt after the suppression of Macrianius' revolt. However, during the spring of 262 AD, the city faced significant unrest due to another attempted usurpation. This time, the prefect of Egypt, Lucius Musius Aemilianus, who had supported Macrianus' revolt, was involved. The correspondence of the Patriarch Dionysius of Alexandria contains vivid descriptions of the turbulent period characterized by invasions, internal strife, pestilence, and famine. Recognizing the potential consequences of losing the vital Egyptian granaries, Galinus took action against Aemilianus by ordering his general, Theodotus, to lead an expedition, likely a naval one. The decisive battle is believed to have occurred in the vicinity of Thebes, resulting in a clear defeat for Aemilianus. Subsequently, Galinus held the consulship three more times in 262, 264, and 266 AD. Between 267 and 269 AD, the Balkans faced invasions from various barbarian groups, such as the Herulians and Goths. Historical records are somewhat unclear regarding the precise dating, participants, and objectives of these invasions. Some modern historians are unable to conclusively determine whether there were multiple invasions or a single prolonged incursion. The initial episode appears to have begun with a significant naval expedition led by the Herulians, who entered present-day Greece from the northern Black Sea region and laid waste to numerous cities, including Athens and Sparta. A subsequent larger-scale invasion took place in the Balkan region. The Romans initially defeated the barbarians at sea, and Galianus' army achieved a victory in Thrace, which prompted the Romans to pursue the invaders further. While some historians attribute the great battle of Nasus against the Goths to Galianus, others credit the triumph to his successor, Claudius II. Around 268 AD, close to or after the Battle of Nasus, Galianus faced another challenge to his authority, this time from Aurelius, a long-serving commander of the cavalry stationed in Mediolanum, modern Milan. Although Aurelius originally monitored Posthumus from this position, he later attempted to negotiate with Posthumus and ultimately sought to seize power for himself. The decisive confrontation occurred near Pontirolo Nuovo, close to Milan, resulting in Aurelius' decisive defeat and retreat to the city. Galianus began a siege of Milan. During this siege, Galianus lost his life, and accounts of his assassination vary, but most sources agree that a majority of his immediate subordinates desired his demise. The Historia Augusta, an otherwise unreliable source compiled long after the events in question, suggests that the conspiracy was led by the Praetorian prefect Aurelius Heraclianus and a man named Marcianus. Cecropius, the commander of the Dalmatian horsemen, reportedly informed Galianus that Aurelius was leaving the city. Seizing the opportunity, Galianus left his tent without his bodyguard. At this moment, Cecropius used a sword to stab him. Tragically, Galianus' wife Cornelia Salonina and his only surviving son Marinianus were also likely killed during this incident. According to varying accounts, Claudius is either proclaimed emperor by the conspirators or chosen by Galianus on his deathbed. The Historia Augusta was cautious about associating Claudius with the assassination due to concerns about the Constantinian dynasty's descent from him. Other sources suggest that Heraclianus organized the conspiracy, involving the future emperors Claudius II Gothicus and Aurelian. After his death, the Senate declared Claudius II a god. Galianus' reign was marked by a high number of usurpers, with one of them, Posthumus, establishing the Gallic Empire with its own Senate in 260 AD after the assassination of Saloninus. This empire endured until 274 AD when Tetricus I and II surrendered to Emperor Aurelian. Alongside the internal challenges, the barbarian peoples on the empire's borders remained active, conducting raids. Furthermore, Galianus' father was captured and killed by the Persians in 260 AD. To divert public attention from these issues, Galianus employed an extensive propaganda campaign, 
which proved to be remarkably successful. He depicted himself as a pious, brave, victorious, and merciful leader on a plethora of coins and presented himself as the protege of various gods, managing to maintain the support of the people. Thanks for watching this video. If you like the video, please subscribe to our channel.